I am Sunny Chan. And I'm Michael Kaiba. And we're here to pump you up. Here at the University of Minnesota, we're interested in generating muscle cells in vitro for use in muscle disease research and cell therapy. Pluripotent stem cells have emerged as an attractive cell source in regenerative medicine research because of their ability to differentiate into many different cell types. They can develop into retinal cells, neuronal cells, blood cells, and even cardiomyocytes that beat on their own. Interestingly, scientists have a hard time making skeletal muscle cells from pluripotent stem cells, which is pretty odd considering most of our body mass comes from skeletal muscles. The biggest challenge is producing skeletal muscle cells that can develop into functional, weight-bearing muscles. So why is it so difficult to produce functional skeletal muscle cells from pluripotent stem cells? Perhaps we can get some insights from what actually happens during embryo development, when muscles are robustly formed. During this process, cells move around a lot, they change their shapes, and they multiply, before they finally develop into muscles. As one can imagine, this is a really complicated three-dimensional process that is not easy to reproduce in a dish, which is really just two-dimensional. We need a new approach. On the other hand, scientists have known for quite some time that when pluripotent stem cells are injected into an animal without an immune system, they will spontaneously develop into a three-dimensional structure called a teratoma. Inside this teratoma, we can find many different cell types, including some very complex structures, such as hair follicles and glands. So aha, maybe we can find good-looking, weight-bearing skeletal muscle cells in teratomas. And that eureka moment starts our journey into discovering that skeletal muscle stem cells from prepotent stem cell-derived teratomas have functional regenerative capacity. We start our teratomas with GFP-labeled mouse prepotent stem cells. GFP makes the donor cells green so we can distinguish cells that we put in from cells that are already in the recipient mouse. We introduce the labeled pluripotent stem cells into the leg muscle of an immune deficient mouse. After about three weeks, teratomas form and we open them up to look for skeletal muscle cells. And indeed, we find that teratomas harbor a good amount of them. These cells express the proteins alpha 7 integrin and FECAM on their surface and we can use these proteins as markers to separate the skeletal muscle cells from the rest of the cells in the teratoma. We refer to them as alpha-7 FECAM cells. When we take these alpha-7 FECAM cells out and grow them in a dish, they differentiate and fuse into multinucleated tubular structures called myotubes, the building blocks of skeletal muscle. So it's great, we find skeletal muscle cells in teratomas, but what makes these teratoma-derived cells so interesting is that they can actually form muscle fibers after transplantation. In fact, as few as 40,000 teratoma-derived alpha-7 FECAM cells, smaller than a grain of sand, can regenerate 80% of the transplanted muscle. And not only can they form muscles after transplantation, the new muscles are functional. In our research, we use an animal model of Duchenne muscular dystrophy a genetic disease of muscle weakness caused by a lack of the muscle protein dystrophin. Diseased animals that have received alpha-7 FECAM cells develop muscles on the treated side that produce more force and have a higher tolerance of fatigue compared to the same muscles on the untreated side. In other words, the new muscle generated is functional. A normal skeletal muscle contains not just muscle fibers that produce force, but also a cell type called muscle stem cells. These muscle stem cells are like lifeguards that watch out to see if muscle fibers are functioning properly. If those fibers are damaged, for example, by injuries, muscle stem cells will help out by joining in and becoming muscle fibers themselves to repair the damage. This makes them very important for maintaining healthy skeletal muscle. So, we were very interested to see if our teratoma-derived alpha-7 FECAM cells would also produce muscle stem cells. Not to disappoint, they do. When the transplanted muscles are injured, these alpha-7 FECAM cells respond by multiplying, moving into the damaged area, and repairing the muscle, just like any normal muscle stem cells would do. Therefore, teratoma-derived alpha-7 FECAM cells are not just capable of making muscle fibers, but also helping them withstand normal wear and tear. 
Altogether, we have developed a new way to produce skeletal muscle stem cells from prepotent stem cells. And these cells have an exceptional potency in regenerating functional muscle fibers.